Hi stamping friends, this is Peggy from Pretty Paper Cards and welcome to Peggy's Corner. That's what I'm going to call my time with you and I'm going to be doing more videos. So today I want to introduce you to Stampin' Blends. They've just become available today from Stampin' Up and they are our brand new alcohol markers and I love them. Now, I have never used alcohol markers until this time, so I'm not an expert, but I ha have learned some things that I'd like to show you. Our alcohol markers are fabulous, and I'll show you something that I've made. Here is a card that I've made with the alcohol markers, the Stampin' Blends, and look at that rich, rich color that you really can't get any other way. I am just loving these things, and isn't that little bird so cute? I've made him in pink and blue, and I, I think I like the pink better, but I'm really liking the blue today. So I wanted to show you um, how to use your Stampin' Blends, and we're going to use a new stamp set that's come out to go with the Stampin' Blends, and it's called Color Me Happy. And I love these, these are the images that you saw just a minute ago on my card. It also has a large thank you and some lanterns and some other sentiments. So it is a fabulous stamp set and it works really good with the Stampin' Blends. Now with Stampin' Blends, we have to use our Mement Black Tuxedo Black Memento ink because that does not bleed. Uh, with this with the alcohol in the alcohol markers so we want to use our memento ink and I'm going to stamp a couple of of the images from the color me happy set and then we're going to color them in so this is the flower the flower stamp and I'm going to get it nice and nice and uh, juicy with the ink there and then I'm going to put it down on my Whisper White cardstock and I'm going to hold it for a few minutes to make sure that the image comes out clear. Okay, and then here's our bird stamp. And I'm going to do the same thing, make sure I get lots of ink on there. And then I'm going to press down pretty hard and leave it for a few minutes so the ink can absorb into the paper. And there's our bird image. Okay, now we're ready to play with our Stampin' Blends. All right, so the colors I'm using for the flowers are these. So we'll start with the flower, and I'm going to turn it up like this. Um, I'm going to color this, well, on my sample, I've used both of these, all of these colors. Stampin' Blends come in duo packs. You can buy them individually, but you can, they, they, really come in a duo pack which is a light and a dark of each of each color so for example the yellow here is light daffodil delight and dark daffodil delight and the orange color is light pumpkin pie and dark pumpkin pie and the fabulous thing about Stampin' Up having alcohol markers is that they coordinate with all of our other colors and all of our other products so when you color your images using these blend, Stampin' Blends, you can use coordinating paper, coordinating designer paper, coordinating ribbon and baker's twine, um, and ink from with our classic ink pads. So you can coordinate everything with our colors, and that is what's so fabulous about Stampin' Up. So I think I'm going to choose... Um, on this flower, I used kind of all the colors, but this is one of the pumpkin pie flowers, and I'm going to use pumpkin pie for this for this flower today. So on the Stampin' Blend, you have a uh, kind of more of a pen-like uh, tip, and you have a brush tip. So I'm going to use the thinner tip today. In fact, I prefer to use the thinner tip. And the caps pop, pop off, but they're nice and secure, which keeps the alcohol... Um, good inside there and you want a nice uh, a nice quick pull on those to get them off so I'm just gonna start there are techniques but since I'm not really a pro I'm just learning I'm just gonna show you what I do and I just go kind of in a circular motion now the one thing to watch out these the Stampin' Blends any alcohol markers they do bleed a little bit past where you might want them to go. So you have to learn to come in 
let's let's take this little por portion right here. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to color this, and I'm moving my point there a little to the a little to inside to the inside of that line, because I don't want it to go outside the line. And this is particularly important when you get to the edge like this. So I come in a little bit inside there, and you see how it bleeds a little further once I've picked up my my stamp and blend. So you want to be really careful. Now I personally am going to color the whole thing with the light pumpkin pie and then go back and do some shading. But for these edges, I'm coming in. I'm not pushing out too far, just a little bit, because I don't want that to, to come out of the lines there. And I'll show you in a minute what happens if you do go out of the lines. But we're going to try it again here to stay inside there, okay. Now I could be using the brush tip, but personally I just feel more control with the pointed tip. I'm going to turn my flower, and now I'm going to try to stay back a little bit. I'm actually working on the inside line there. You can see that. Okay, I'm going to work on the in, touch the inside line, and that then it bleeds out a little bit to the outside line. So that gives me a real clear edge. Staying in back a little bit from the line. Now I think I'm going to go outside the lines just a little bit just to show you what happens. So what if I go out just like that? I'll color the rest of my flower and then I'll show you what we're going to do with that. And again I'm going to stay back on that. Okay. Now I've gone out of the lines. I'm going to click that closed. I've gone out of the lines just a little bit, and, and for those situations, we have the color lifter. And it also has a pointed end and a brush end. And I'm going to take the pointed end of the color lifter, and what the color lifter does, it's not like an eraser, it just pushes the color around. So my goal is to push that color back into the flower. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to push it back in like that. And I may have to go over it a time or two. Um, this looks pretty good. I'm, what I'm going to do is let that dry, and then I'm going to come back to that before I finish my flower. Now we're going to we're going to come in now with the darker pumpkin pie shade and do some blending. And these, the reason these this stamp set is so great is that it's really made for for the using alcohol markers and blending your colors. So now I'm going to come back to these edges and I'm going to apply the darker pumpkin pie color right in there like that. Again, being super careful, mostly on those outside edges. Because this is what's providing the shading for your flower. And that's what you want. That's the fabulous thing about these Stampin' Blends is that fabulous shading and blending of color that you really can't get any other way. And I'm going to come in here and color that and color these edges. Those little places are provided for you to let you know where the shading should be. Okay, now I'm going to come back with my light pumpkin pie color and I'm going to blend that in so that the difference between the two isn't as striking. So I just blend the light over the dark and it just shades it just perfectly. Really comes out lovely. And you can even leave some places, you know, lighter like that and not go over them at all a second time. And that adds even more shading. For example, I think I'm going to go ahead and leave that that one point right there. I'm going to blend this in here like that. I'll make sure that gets all blended nicely. I'm going to blend this. And you really don't know until it until it dries exactly how, you know, you don't see the beauty of it until it dries. The alcohol dries and there again I'm going to come in with that. And you don't have to be a pro or anything. 
now there's our beautiful flower. Now I'm going to come back with the color lifter and just go after that one little spot again and just push that back in there like that. And I think it's going to be completely disappeared now. Now you can you can go back with your um, with your darker shade if you want to and color over some of the lines and even blend that in a little bit. You can do so many things. Uh-oh, I went out, out of the lines again. Let's get my color lifter. I wasn't paying attention. I'm sorry, I was talking. Okay, so I'm going to push that back. And I'll come back at it a second time and we won't even see it. Now let's look at our bird. For our sweet little bird, we're going to use two different shades two different colors. We're going to use Pool Party, and here's the Light and the Dark Pool Party. And we're also going to use Bermuda Bay, and we have the Light and the Dark Bermuda Bay. And for my bird, I want to do his entire body in the very light Pool Party color, and then come back and do some shading. So I'm just going to color him. The little tail feathers are a bit hard because you have to be real careful. Don't go too far down them because it'll come out of the lines just gently in there and again I could use my brush but my brush end but I'm not going to okay so right now he's a very soft soft blue get up to those edges there I'm going to go around his beak because I'm going to color his beak with the pumpkin pie color okay so really gently color him in. And now we can do lots of different shading. And I'm going to start out with the dark um, Bermuda Bay to bring in some real dark, the dark look of his feathers because he has some beautiful colored feathers. And these little lines are made for you to add shading here. Like that. And then I'm going to come in on his tail feathers. And remember this is all going to be blended. Okay, and now I'm going to go back with actually the dark, let's see, the darker pool party. And I'm going to blend that in. Being really careful around those tail feathers. Like that. Give him some sh more shading. Now one of my goals is to stay away from his little his little um, puffy breast area there because that's where they usually either look very bright colored or very light colored and soft. So I'm going to try to stay away from that and have that little area be nice and soft. So I'm just blending. You can see how nicely that's starting to blend up. What do you think? Now, I'm sure that you'll have some other neat things that you're going to want to do with these um, Stampin' Blends. I'm sure we're all going to learn a lot about them and how to use them. This is just a real quick little tutorial just to get you used to them. Now, I'm going to come back in now with my pumpkin pie uh, color, and I'm going to do his little beak. And really, when I've noticed, I just do little dots when I want to make sure very lightly little dots because I don't want to go out of the lines. And I have done the feet, but it's real tricky. Let's see if I can do some little dots on the feet. It's pretty tricky there to get. I'm not even really pressing down. Okay. Now we'll go back and fix that one little spot on the flower, and I think we're going to be done. Let's see if we can push that back in a little bit more. And I promise you won't even see it when it's dry. Now one thing I want to tell you is make sure that you always have something underneath. It didn't bleed through to this 
um, graph paper, but it did bleed through the back. So one thing I've noticed is you really don't want to have a card where the person opens the card and this is the back side. You want to do it the way that I've done it on my sample here, which is I've put an additional um, piece of Whisper White cardstock on top here, and that then I've I've added it to, this is one of the little note cards, so that that way when they open their card, this is nice and clean. So those are the Stampin' Blends. What do you think? Gorgeous, huh? Well, um, I will come back to you another time and we'll do some more things with the blends, but for now, I want to thank you so much for stopping by um, to Peggy's Corner. And if you want to order some of the Stampin' Blends, you can order one or in the set of two, or you can order the whole thing. That's what I did. And you can also get this fabulous um, Color Me Happy stamp set that goes with them. So I hope that you get a few Stampin' Blends and start playing with them. Thanks so much for stopping by today. Bye-bye.